Uh, we're going to go over uh, fonts and font install, which is actually a typeface install. Then you're going to take a quiz. Take a look. Pause for effect. OK, so there you have it. Um, let's look at our lecture today, too. Uh, the videos are very interesting. Mrs. Benitez made them a little history of the glyphs versus fonts, fonts versus typeface, if you want to know the difference and be that person in a party and say, actually, that's called typeface, not font. All right, well, we're talking about digital prints and font installation this week. So in your lab, we are going to be uh, doing a font exercise, how to install a font. Then we're going to, uh, I mean, first of all, we're going to do our our Project 3 critique. That's at the end of this Spark lecture. There's a little guide here on Project 3 critiques. Uh, you know, and do you want me to read these slides to you? Uh, guided group discussion to elicit feedback, right? What I like doing, and I, I've already explained this to you, I'm going to tell you all again. Um, you're going to pretend like you're all on the same team and that your name is going on this work as well as the person presenting. Is there anything different you would do? Uh, is there anything more you would like to add? Here you go. So here's some helpful hints here. When you're being critiqued, be ready with your work. Be ready to talk about your work. Listen. Please don't be defensive. Take notes. It can, if uh, have a friend help you, be positive and polite. Analyze and integrate the feedback. Um, it always helps to uh, helps yourself to go back and make a changes. Since we have our master files, we can go back and update our file after critiques. Uh, it's up to your lab instructor if they're going to allow you to upgrade your work or not. But just for your own edification, for yourself, it's always great to go back and you know edit your work if you notice there's something wrong with it. Uh, how to give constructive feedback. Uh, Mrs. Benita has talked about this hamburger method. Positive points, slightly negative point, and then end with a positive point. A great way to uh, lift somebody up, knock them down a little bit, then nick them, uh, pick them up again. Um, speak clearly, be creative, offer cre uh, create a supportive environment. Um, we're basically talking about in project three, the key elements of design that I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, having taken visuals or in visuals right now. Line, shape, form, color, space. Uh, principles of balance and proportion are important. You can always comment on uh, the layout, uh, how well balanced it is, uh, the use of color and negative space. Um, you can talk about background, middle ground, foreground, rule of thirds, et cetera. Um, have fun with this. There are uh, examples here. If you want to uh, click on this button right here, you can see, uh, if you don't know what questions to ask, uh, here are a bunch of questions that you can use to ask your fellow students. And if you're like, uh, I'm not going to do this, uh, each lab instructor is given at least 20 points at, to use at their discretion for class participation. This is a great way to rack up those class participation points uh, in class. All right, so that's what's happening in lab. First, we're going to talk about our project three. Uh, we're going to do our critique. Then uh, we'll move on to probably an introduction to project four after we do our project three, which is going to be a, a digitally printed scarf that we are all going to design in Photoshop. Uh, we're certainly welcome to use our own photography. Encouraged to use your own drawings. If you if you have hand drawn stuff that you want to bring into uh, onto your scarf, I recommend you bring it into Illustrator first. Turn it into a vector smart object. That way you can scale it into Photoshop, and then um, that way it won't be uh, fuzzy at all. And then uh, you can rasterize that layer. And I will show you how to do that all in about five minutes. OK, um, so a little bit of background with digitally prints, uh, digital engineered prints. Basically, you uh, are in Photoshop. You can design uh, a big, uh, just be creative with your uh, artwork. And this is what Alexander McQueen did. He just made these massive uh, digital pieces of art and then overlaid his uh, flat patterns on top of that and cut it out and then was able to achieve uh, garments that look like this. As you can see, there's a whole lot of waste going on here. It's not exactly a zero waste pattern, um, but this is couture, one of a kind pieces. And so I think Mr. McQueen gets a pass for these stunning show pieces here. 
Um, but we, we're going to be doing something like this. We're going to take an artboard and we're going to start laying down imagery. And as you can see, just because there are maybe six, seven uh, base images that went into this um, piece of artwork, uh, it's a lot of it is uh, reflected and mirrored and uh, given symmetry to take just a few high-res images and uh, carry them a long way. And I'll show you how to do that in, in, a, in a short bit. Um, Digital printing uh, is a lot less wasteful and uh, more economical than traditional uh, print. Traditional print on fabric. Uh, we have a little summary here of the design process. We have some videos too if you want to watch um, digital printing, uh, design and print in action. Uh, go ahead and do this on your own time. And you can see a breakdown of the world's uh, worldwide printing production here. China is, is, of course, leading the way. America very much nearly in the last place. And uh, we have uh, the type of fabrics being used, uh, cotton being the overwhelming popular um, fabric. We will, our scarves that we're making in class are being printed on a, I think it's a, it's either a silk charmeuse or a, a habutai, one of those two. And um, it's going to be, at least five high resolution images. But as you can see, you can take five images and carry it a long way if you so choose. Um, it doesn't have to be abstract like this. This is just one example, but um, a minimum of five. I don't want to see five squares plopped down on your uh, scarf. It should, it should be a, a finished composition, like a st what is described here as a standalone design and not look like it was cut off from a bolt of fabric. So that means it should have like a center of attention, a uh, foreground, a midground, and a background. It's going to be about 50 inches wide, 14 inches tall, at 200 DPI, in RGB color with a quarter inch safety margin. And I'll, I'll walk you through all this. Here's a description of our, what we're gonna do for our digitally printed scarf. The final format will be in a TIFF uh, format. Flattened with LZW compression, your lab instructors will go over this in lab in much detail uh, in a couple weeks. So this week, what you're going to do is you're going to be focusing on finding the highest resolution images that you can find for your scarf or creating your own high resolution images through Illustrator. And I'll show you how to do this in a second here. Um, yeah, so we have foreground, background, midground, uh, five high res images. Yeah, and then here is an example I included um, that you can click. Let's take a look at some of these scarves. Uh, so this student, when they went looking for high-res images, and of course, so I've already gone through many times on how to use Google or Unsplash to find uh, the highest resolution image possible. And of course, uh, in Photoshop, when we were doing our scarves, let's just take a look at the size here. If I go to new and I go to print here, uh, I'm going to change my resolution to 200 dpi, and our width is going to be uh, 50 inches. Our height will be 14, right? RGB color. And um, let's look. I'm going to go to my image dropdown. Look at my canvas size here, 50 inches. If I if I change this to pixels, I'm at 10,000 pixels. So it's going to be hard to find. Uh, a photograph that's 10,000 pixels wide. But let's take a look. So if I type in something like a lavender, and I go into my image area, and I go into tools here, I go size, and we used to be able to, to actually select the resolution, but they removed that because people like us were going in here and taking pictures. So um, let's take, this is a video still, but let's take a look. If I click here on this still, it shows me my resolution of, the, of this picture. It says 2,000 by 1,000. Let's see if I can actually get that photograph. Nope, it's a screenshot. So if I were to grab this photograph here, copy, and then go into Photoshop, and you can see that this picture is woefully too small. And so what you don't want to do is take your image and scale it up to fit on your scarf because it will look like garbage. Um, it may look okay on your screen, but remember your computer screen is 
showing you images at 72 dpi. So you can't see the pixelation as well as you could if you actually print it in real person. So if I click on this check mark here and say yes, it looks kind of clear because my screen is very small. But this is actually uh, what's going to happen when you do this is it's actually going to look very pixelated. It'll look something like this when you go and print it out. So we do not want to do that. So let me show you how to get around this problem. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is to find the highest resolution pictures you can. And that is just going to be trial and error, looking at large images, and then looking at the size. Um, I know this is, this is the biggest challenge in this part of the assignment, but there are ways around it. Let me show you how to do that. So uh, when you download your pictures for, um, for this assignment here, and I'll show you a few pictures. So say I'm looking for a background picture uh, for my scarf, right? I'm look and I typed in something like abstract artwork or clouds. So if I go and I found this, uh, this piece of artwork right here, oh, look at that, it's a little, um, Happy right here. And there's all kinds of ways to to um, fill. We'll go content aware fill. Let's try that. All right. So uh, we have a picture here. I'm going to do a select all. And let's take a look at what it looks like when I paste it in. So this is quite a large picture, but it's still not enough to cover my uh, Square. So, you know, like I've done before, I've taken images and uh, copy and pasted them. And I have uh, gone to edit and transform, and we can flip it horizontally to uh, take this picture here and make it look like one layers here. You can certainly hold your control key or command key and highlight both layers and right click and say merge until you get like one picture, one high resolution picture. Now, because that picture originally was high res, when we zoom in, we can see it's going to stay at a high res. Uh, it's going to stay high res. Something like this, I, I suppose you could tile it, but um, it's going to take a long time. Let's see. I mean, you certainly could if you wanted to. I'm going to flip that so I don't create a seam line. Transform, um, flip horizontal. You know, and I could take these two layers and merge them. All right, so there's lots of ways to do this. There's different, uh, let's try one more. I do select all and I copy. I go back. It's just, again, this was another large image. So earlier I was looking at something like uh, I had some clouds here. Um, I did this last week. I did a control C, copy, and then I went to my scarf here, hit paste. And you have something like this that you want to use. You see it, 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 it's too small, right? So if you want to use a picture like that, you're going to have to start tiling and uh, putting together and end up is it? and then uh, merge the layers here. And you could keep on doing that, right? You can rotate your picture and uh, maybe I'll transform this one and flip the horizontal again all different kinds of things you know so we need like a little area of focus for our center uh, we need a foreground a background um, another way to do this if um, you're having trouble with a background picture is you can just always go and lay down a solid color or even a gradient overlay. You know, we have tons of gradients here. And I'm in my layer effects panel. You know, we have these folders. Once you click on the gradient overlay, you've got all kinds of options for um, different gradients, right? And then you can change the angle of your gradients. You can change the, the width of your gradients. You can change the colors of your gradients if you want. All right, and then uh, the other option, again, will be to um, bring in like your own artwork. So let's say you hand drew something uh, with like a 
pencil and then you inked it with solid black ink and you want to bring this into Photoshop for your scarf, right? So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to show you why just bringing it into, opening it in Photoshop and then dropping it in is not a good idea. Um, look at this. So I'm going to zoom in on our hand drawn and you can see it's kind of fuzzy. It, it when you get it up close and when you have it in real life, you will see these little squares, these little pixels. If you bring in a piece of work like this and then decide to try to uh, scale it up, right? But let me show you how to use Illustrator to, to get around this problem where it's all pixelated, right? So I'm going to go into um, Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to open that um, Uh, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, it's in my images. All right, so I'm going to grab it. So now I've opened this hand-drawn picture in Adobe Illustrator, and we're looking at this drawing, and I want to turn this into a vector object, right? So do you remember how to do that? Um, I know my brain's like, well, how do you use Illustrator again? Essentials Classic, let's reset our Essentials Classic. I'm going to grab my selection tool and click on the photograph to get this image trace option up and I will hit the image trace button and it turns it into this vector object. I can go into my image trace panel and if I want to do like a, if I want more shades of gray, I can certainly choose um, shades of gray or even high fidelity photo. Let's try shades of gray here and see if we can't get a better, um, better detail in our hand drawn. So this, this is to simulate if you have some sketches that you want to add to your um, scarf. You certainly can do this. The computer is working hard here. So now I have this vector um, drawing here. I'm going to hit the uh, expand button. Now you can see in detail, you know, oops. I'm going to zoom in here. You see now this whole picture has been turned into a series of vector shapes, right? It's pretty neat. All right, so I'm going to grab this whole thing, and do a select all, and then I'm going to do a copy. Or you can even drag it, like, uh, you could drag it onto your Photoshop scarf, which is what should be happening here. Did it work? So there it is. It's It's been dragged in. And this is... Um, so once you see the blue X here, you hit the check mark to lock it in. This dropped it in as a smart object, so I will be able to uh, scale this. Um, even if I did it as, instead of um, grayscale, if I did this in black and white, so I'm going to go back in time here. I'm going to stop that. All right, so here is my original picture. If I used uh, black and white, and I maybe made the lines a little bit thicker, you certainly do this. Let's see if I do a select all and I copy. Can I just paste it here in uh, Photoshop? Sometimes there's problems with that, so I'm going to just drag this in. And you can see the difference here between the black and white and the um, grayscale. So yes here. All right, and then remember in Illustrator how we were getting rid of those, um, the white background? So I showed this to my lab, I think. Hopefully your lab instructor showed this to you. After you do your image trace, you hit the expand button so you get all the anchors here. I'm going to grab my uh, direct select tool, this white triangle, and I'm going to capture the corner anchors and I'm going to delete them. And now I just have my pure, my pure vector art with um, no background, right? And then here, let me... Um, Let me get rid of this. You can see here in your in your layer panel it says vector smart object. 
so it's not rasterized. So I can't apply layer effects to this yet, um, but I will in a second. So here, I'm going to take this vector object. I'm going to drop it onto my scarf here. And you can see already it's much larger. And the background's gone, right? You can certainly take your um, any artwork that you draw and run it through Illustrator and take out the background. And you can drop it onto your uh, scarf here. I'm going to flip this horizontally, right? And uh, now we have a high resolution. You know, we have these very clean, clear black lines. Uh, but it's still vector smart object. So once we have this scaled here, and let's say you want to add some layer effects to it, you're going to need to, uh, let's see, merge these layers here. We're going to rasterize this layer. Oh, did I already rasterize it? Oh, maybe I did. You know, they keep updating this program. Maybe when you drag it in directly, it used to give me a pop-up that said, do you want to paste this in as pixels or as a smart object? If they ask you that question, you say smart object, you scale your smart object, and then later you're going to right-click it and uh, rasterize it. So this, this here says smart object. Now I, I could rasterize this one. So this is, a, this is still a smart object. These are still the lines should be pretty clear. It doesn't get clear when I do this, but um, if you wanted to make changes to that, you'd have to right click on it and say rasterize. But this one, I didn't remove that white background yet, and I did with this one, so. And you can see the difference. You start to see like how t-shirts and mug design happens. And this is really all that happens in uh, a lot of the artwork out there, is they're just taking drawings and running it through image trace and dropping it into Photoshop. And uh, once you're here, you know, um, let's say you want to have a uh, picture background, certainly could do that. I mean, there's lots of things you can do. Um, for your boundaries here, let me show you what we need to do for the boundaries. Let me turn this on. All right. Uh, we need about a quarter inch for the boundary. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this um, rectangle tool. And we, we might be able to drag a guide here to make sure that our boundaries are perfect. So I'm going to go to view here and we'll say new guide. And we just need to do a quarter inch off the, the, the edges. Am I not sharing my screen? I think I'm sharing my screen. All right. So in this case, let's start with the, with the horizontal um, guide. And here you can see it says 0 to 14 inches, right? I just need to go a quarter inch off the top from 0 and a quarter inch from 14. So from 0 here, if you add a quarter inch, it's like 0.25. That's a quarter, 0.25, 25 cents. There's my guideline here. And if I take my rectangle and tool and I just drag it here, even though I'm outside of the artboard, it's fine. It, uh, it will automatically clip it. There's my rectangle. And you can fill it with uh, any color you want. If you want to put a border in there, you could even put a gradient border in here. If you have OCD and you want to make this perfect, you certainly could uh, have that layer and uh, shrink it down to the correct size. Oops, Photoshop, I got to hold the shift key down. All right, and then uh, we'll make our other boundaries. We'll just go to a uh, new new guide, view, new guide, and we'll go uh, 14 minus 0.25 is, I think, 13.75. Here's our new guide down here. We can add our rectangle. And this is how we create our um, border. Uh, so we'll go new guide again. And this, this time, I'll go vertical. Same thing, 0.25. And we'll take our rectangle tool and drag that right there. And then uh, new guide. We'll go uh, 50. It's 50 inches. So we'll go, uh, what's it, 49.75. And there is our uh, last boundary. Now you see here I have four rectangle layers, and this is the little border of our scarf. I can take, hold my control key down, and I can 
select these layers uh, or your command key if you have a Mac, and you can merge these shapes here into one layer. So if I toggle the visibility, you can see it turning on and off. And once I have that one layer, you know, I can change the color to uh, anything I want, uh, even a gradient if you want. And it, you don't even have to have a border. You can have something called an implied border. And what that means is um, your objects will get close to the edge, but not over the edge. Let me show you an example of that. Um, Uh, scarf, scarfs. Okay. So I'll, I'll just go back to my old examples. I swear I can't read this morning. So this student has an implied border. It's not an actual border. So she didn't draw the rectangle method, but you know, you'll notice her shapes didn't go past the edge. She also should, couldn't find a 10,000 wide pixel image, of course. The biggest images she found were all about 1,500 pixels. So she got she found some watercolor flowers. And then she started to tile and use symmetry to great effect. She found this one squiggly line and then created a background uh, texture and then put her flowers on top. And you could certainly do something like this. Uh, I have a student here that you, this is, she had some x-rays done. She got into an accident and she took her own x-rays and scanned them in to create a scarf and her whole idea was that she would wrap this around her face. And um, so she had like only one, two, three images here in her scarf. And I said, you know, you need at least five. And uh, so sneakily, she just added like these two little gemstones to her skull. This is not what I'm talking about when I say five high res images, but she said, go ahead, take the points off. I don't care. This is the scarf that I want to wear. I'm like, okay, fine. So we let her do it. Uh, this student took um, Pam uh, Greer here and ran her photograph through Illustrator to create a vector work. Uh, also this uh, peace sign here. And then the background image, I think this was a Photoshop image. So she had a blend of Photoshop and Illustrator to great effect. The, um, the Pam Greer image she found was very small. It wasn't clear or high res. That's why she ran it through Illustrator. And then I think it looks great, uh, that Illustrator um, image trace effect for her scarf. Uh, this student went monochromatic, uh, was not super careful about um, the resolution. So you see like great resolution on the skull here, but a not a matching resolution with these hieroglyphs on the side. And if you were hoping that um, people won't notice, um, whoops, how do I get this centered again? If you're hoping people won't notice, uh, people notice. It, it gets fuzzy. And we have like 65,000 colors available. Why use just one color? All right, uh, some students, they make little things with uh, emotional statements in the middle. Just make, make sure we don't, if you don't have a border, don't make your images right up to the very edge because we are gonna fold over about a quarter inch of fabric to make the hem, or I mean, you will probably have to do that if you wanna finish your scarf. These scarves are gonna come unfinished. Um, you're gonna find a construct, uh, design buddy to help you uh, hem your scarf. Um, certainly you can do something like this. This student didn't really have a foreground object. She took like six pieces of art and then overlapped the edges and blended them with her, with that airbrush tool. She turned her eraser into a soft-edged airbrush and blended the images. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting. You can certainly take multiple images and create vertical mosaics like this if you want. Uh, we would like to see something in the center so it doesn't look like a, or something to draw your focus, your eye, so it doesn't look like a piece of fabric. Um, I told students no square images. You can't drop squares onto your scarf. And this student dropped a bunch of circles. <laughs> Joke's on you, Mr. Han. All right, you know, very funny. Um, this student also has uh, this is some hand sketches of some skulls and then uh, some photographs of some lace, but the, the resolution doesn't quite match between the two, so you will get somewhat of a jarring transition on your print when you look at it. Um, I hear a lot of conversation happening. I hope it's not for me. Um, 
This student went through and saturated like several pictures and then went through and cut out triangle shapes and then started pasting them in in like a mosaic. And at first the student was like, I'm super excited. This is like, this is gonna be cool. And so she was going through and doing this about a week into it, you know, she, her eyes were dried out and she was like, I hate my life. But <laughs> at the end, you know, uh, she did finish and it, it does look great. When it did print out as fabric and she wore it on her body, um, it looked fantastic. Um, so when you see stuff, you know, stay with it, uh, don't give up. All right, once in a while we get students drawing these very interesting tomato plants. Uh, that's what this is called. It's called a tomato plant. Please label it as such. All right, that's all I'm going to show you about that, I think. Oh, wait, um, I have one more here. Um, Do you have a so this of the scarf? Like of the outcome me? of the scarf? Can you ask that again? Do you have a picture of the outcome of the scarf? The outcome of the scarf? Oh, you want to see it? The purple one? Um, no, but here, I can show you. Watch this. Where's my screen here? Am I, can you see me? So yes, you're going to get a scarf. Um, so these are abandoned scarves. We had a student come and not pick up her work. So we have about 50 inches of scarf here. Lotus there is a, I'm sorry, what? I was recognizing the scarf. The lotus flower bomb is pretty in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's is this one you're talking about or the print. But yeah, you'll have, uh, there will be a, a, an unfinished edge here that you will be able to pull threads out. You know, this is, has our print information on here. So we keep that. But uh, if you're handy with a sewing machine or know someone, they can just roll this over and do a hem for you. And then you're ready to go. We have um, lots of, this is what it looks like after it's hemmed. Uh, I hemmed, this was hemmed with like a white thread. So it, it created this little white thing. Here. This is my pizza scarf with the Godzilla's on the corners. Yes, this was, you know, and you can create like a little, I don't know, breathing scarf or something for loved ones. Um, hope that helps here. Let me show you, let me show you one more scarf example here. Um, so this student here, she couldn't find any large images either. And she found just some 1.5 megabyte images. And she found, I don't know, maybe like 12 of them. And then she tiled them together and used symmetry. She has an implied border, so there's no actual border. This was, uh, this one worked out very well. Uh, she wasn't afraid to use black as a bold color to use in digital printing because uh, the printer has to be working perfectly to get a smooth color. But, you know, it's digital. Anything you can design in Photoshop. Or, and or Illustrator uh, that will be available to us. Um, the, uh, there are some things we can't do. Uh, you cannot do like a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton. You can't copy that like perfectly because now we all have the skill to to, cr to create our own Fendi uh, scarf. But um, we can't do that. We're going to get in trouble. Copyright stuff. Um, also, uh, we don't. We can't have um, sorority or fraternity. Uh, like banners, like don't create something for your dorm. The sorority and fraternity people on campus are super litigious. They love to sue us. So um, let's not give them some fodder. And they're always waiting for the tech students scarf project. And then they go and then they, people, they look at them and they, they don't want us making merch because they sell their own uh, sorority and fraternity scarves. So, um, you have to get your images, Creative Commons and or um, Unsplash is another great place to get images. Um, yeah, so don't give me a scarf filled with Disney princesses or Audrey Hepburn holding a Coca-Cola bottle. I know there's like 15 of you out there that I just crushed if I said no Audrey Hepburn. There are lots of free Audrey Hepburn Creative Commons images. Um, project, what's the question for project three? Do we need to do the same? Yeah, project three was through Creative Commons or Unsplash. We talked about that many times in lecture. Um, yeah, so you don't want to have like logos on your project three. Yeah, you can add text. Um, 
The text doesn't count as one of the, your design elements. So if you have text, you will still need to get five images unless you use your text as a template and cut out like a like we did for project three, that example I did where I took like a splotch and, or a mermaid, or I can't remember what I did. And then we cut out like a, a fabric shape. You can take your text and make it really fat and then cut out like an ocean picture out of your text. If you do something like that, then that counts. But if you're just putting text, you can't put five sentences down and then go, I'm done with my scarf project. Um, but, but text is certainly welcome. So yeah, so take a look at those examples I put up. Um, oh, wait, you know, I should talk about um, fonts. So we're going to go and do this exercise in lab. We've given you like uh, 20 words, and you're going to uh, replace the word with a new font. You're going to go download a new font. You're going to go find, you're going to go either to um, Font Squirrel, or you're going to go to uh, Letterhead, or uh, I like to go to dafont.com. It's D A F O N T.com. And make sure that when you download a font that you get one that says free and that doesn't say uh, demo or shareware because those will not allow you to save your work. So I get always get email at 3 in the morning saying, my work won't save. It's because you didn't get a free font. I mean, you can, you can buy your own font, certainly, but you, know, you don't have to. You can find free stuff. And then you'll see sometimes you'll hear it'll say two font files. You know, so if you were to download, let's say, Sundeep here, and then I'm going to, it'll come as a, a zip file. You double click on the, you, you open up zip file. Screen. Oh my God, I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you. Do this, I thought I, yeah. So, letterhead, font squirrel, defont.com. Free play, places to get free fonts. Defont is not plural. Uh, over here, it says, it should say free for personal use. If it says shareware or demoware, uh, it won't let you save, so avoid those. Hit the download button. Once you have that, um, here's the folder. You know, you double click on your, your zip folder to unpack it. You will see occasionally up to five different files here. I see two here, one that says OTF, you know, original type, one that says TTF, true type. It doesn't matter which one you do. Um, you remember that those folders I had you make in the beginning of the semester where it said uh, fashion, there was like AI, images, PDF, PSD. Hopefully we had a folder called fonts and we're gonna put our fonts into that folder. If you don't have one, go ahead and make a font folder and drop your fonts in there. And then once you have your font folder, um, because if you install fonts on your computer, it doesn't install on any computer you're presenting. So if you use a fancy font in like say PowerPoint, and then you have it saved, and then you go and take your PowerPoint and go to like, let's say you go to the United Nations and you're gonna give a speech, you plug it in, none of the fonts are gonna work because you need to bring a folder that has your fonts in it, and then you need to install these fonts onto the new computer. And how you install it for Mac and for PC, all you have to do is pick which one you're gonna do, OTF or TTF, it doesn't matter, either one. If you see a folder that has like four TTF or four OTF, you have to double click on all of them because one of them will be like lowercase, one will be uppercase, one will be numbers and symbols. Or sometimes they just put it all into one. So I'm gonna click on this, double click on this TTF one and you see they put it all into one. They put lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. But occasionally they'll put it into three separate files. You just hit the install button um, and it installs it across your computer on all programs. Um, the Apple computer might open up an extra pop-up and have you select from a list of fonts that it has installed which one you want to see. That's pretty straightforward. Just look at the window, click on your Sundeep font, and then when you're here in your um, in your work, if you go to your text layer and you start typing in some text right here, you can go and look down in alphabetical order and there will be a new font here called uh, Sundeep right there. You click on that, and there it is. There's my Sunday font, and I'm going to um, make this nice and big. Let's bring this uh, to the front. Let's change the color. Double click here, and we'll say make that black, or make it white, and we we'll give it like a drop shadow or something here. Boom. All right, so 
certainly you, you can add text here, and that's how you install a font. Um, your lab instructors will go over the specifics on the assignment, but basically you're going to install like 20 fonts, and then you're going to create, um, recreate this work here. So you're going to try to think about when you read the word like fashionable or weird, you're going to try to think of uh, a category, you know, cartoon, uh, you know, medieval, modern, uh, you know, you can look at all these different choices. You know, one of them was patriotic, so someone may think of like old documents written with a feather and ink, and you might want to get some calligraphy to show, uh, you know, ink splatters of uh, of the patriotic day the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, we're going to make a new sheet. I'm going to go to print. We'll go to, you can do 8.5 by 11. I'm going to do 14 by 11. Let's make it a little bit wider. 300 BPI is fine. Um, so we have this artboard here. And you're going to end up having uh, 20 layers, one for each word. So as you, uh, I know we're all tempted to just do like a batch a batch copy and paste. Can we do that? Does that work? Uh, nope. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Patriotic, retro, weird, combo, uh, comic, feminine. So I'll go um, like this. Patriotic. So there's, there's one word. What was the other one? <laughs> retro, weird, comic, feminine. Retro, weird, comic, feminine. Retro, weird. Retro, weird, comic, And, you know, and if you wanted to put a guide up here to um, to line up everything, you're certainly welcome to do that. But you don't you don't have to, right? Um, and I have Snap on, so it's telling me when my words are all equidistant from each other. You can see over here in my layer panel, I have one layer for each one. So. Uh, when you down, when you find a font, let's say patriotic, right? I'm going to go to defont.com, and maybe I want something um, that looks like uh, the same typeface that was used to write the Declaration of Independence. So I see one here. It says Comb Valentine. It says free. So I'm going to download this one. I'll open up my zip folder, and um, PC users. All you have to do is say uh, extract, right? Once you extract all your files, you have to go find that folder, so wherever you extracted it. Here's my folder here. I'm going to cut this out. And I already made a, um, a font folder inside my, um, my fashion tech folder, which is a good idea. So I'm going to put my folder right there, come Valentine. And then I see I have two files here, one OTF, original text font and one TTF. You only need one of these because if I were to double click on one, I see both. It has lowercase, uppercase, and the numbers. Just hit the install button. Um, what happens with a, for Mac users, for Apple users, you may it may bring up an additional pop-up and ask you to select which font you want to install. So then you just you just check mark come Valentine and then hit the install button. It's almost the same type of pop-up as this, but it's usually like one extra step. Now if I go over to uh, my Photoshop file, and we're going to create two columns of words, like 10 words each here. Um, I'm going to click on this patriotic, and I'm going to select uh, come Valentine cone. Come, what is it? It's a here, come Valentine here. And so it changes the text right here. That's a little bit large, so I'm going to um, do a control P, and I'll shrink it down to a reasonable size here. And then I'm going to um, use like a 14-point aerial after that. So I'm going to go open up my word here, do a space. Then I'm going to change it to aerial, aerial regular. And I'll say uh, 
I uh, chose, whoops, that's uh, way too big, about 14 point. Let's see. They say, and then I could do it in, in a black color. I chose a come Valentine because it looks like a handwritten letters like a declaration of independence uh, written it. right? So I'm going to go grab this and move this over here. And I need to go about halfway, so I'm going to go right about here. And then I'll just hit the Enter key. And you see it's kind of bunched up right here. To, to fix something like this, you can go into, um, whoa, not that button. You can go into your character uh, text here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's over here on your right, your properties. And you have your spacing here between your lines. And you can go, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit wider. So wait, I just uh, grab all these. character. So here you just, uh, I had to highlight the line that I wanted to, to move. And you can, there's a slider here, you can move your text. You can adjust the spacing between your letters. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do. Once I have that looking good, I'm going to move that back. And then we'll do like retro. So uh, do I need to, so what font looks like retro? So you have another good thing about the font is they have these little categories here, and retro. So I'm thinking maybe Gothic, medieval, or no, that's that's not retro. Retro would be like groovy, you know, something from the 70s or 80s or something. So this one is uh, free for personal use. I'll download, keep on trucking, and. Uh, we will, um, I only see one file here, so I will extract this one. And then I'll go to my download folder, wherever that is. And uh, here's my keep on trucking. I'm going to copy that, cut that out, go to my fashion tech folder, go to my font folder. Let's put that in here. And I'm going to double click this TTF, and I see lowercase, uppercase numbers. All right, looking good. Let's install it. Then I'll go to my Photoshop here. I'm going to choose that retro, and I'm going to look for Keep On Trucking. H-I-J-K, Keep On Trucking. There it is. And uh, it's a little bit big, so I will shrink it down a little bit. And maybe I could find a better color than this peach color. What's a good retro color? Uh, there we go. And then um, I'm going to go and start typing in uh, Arial. Arial, uh, like 14 point, uh, black. And uh, keep on fucking was used because it looks like a, a groovy uh... then I'll double click here in the line hit enter well I'm getting that problem again let's uh, move that over Right? And that's fine. And we're going to keep on doing that. Uh, and we're going to end up with something like, uh, oops, something like this. So she's a patriotic. She says, I chose American bravado because it looks like ink spatters. The founding fathers might have written like angry. She said, I chose CF my bloody Valentine because when you're angry, there will be blood. And these are all uh, appropriate, funny, 
Uh, only problem I had is I get a lot of people choosing Chinese takeaway for foreign. Come on, guys. I don't know if I'm priming you. <laughs> but lots of other um, fonts available for foreign. So just <laughs> keep that in mind. Excuse me, just had a coughing fit. All right, so this will be due. When you're done with this, uh, save it as a PDF and upload it to the appropriate place before our lab next week. If you get an error that says it won't save, it's because one of the fonts you used was not actually free. It costs money. Um, if you can figure out which font that is, uh, go and replace it. If it's right before class and you can't figure it out, just save it as a JPEG. You can go over here to where it says export and save for web. And then here you just, uh, there's a preset here. You can choose a uh, high quality and then just hit save and then save it where you can find it um, in your fashion tech uh, folder, your PDF folder. Or uh, yes, and then you know name it appropriately. I don't want you doing this, but you know this is just an emergency if, if for some reason you accidentally use um, the wrong font, the one that costs money, you don't want to pay for it, and that's the workaround for that. But uh, if you pay attention when you're choosing your fonts, it shouldn't be an issue. You should be able to very clearly see uh, free, 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 100% free is even better, 100%. But if it says shareware, if it says demo, uh, avoid it. I think that's it. Anybody have any? Anybody have any questions about anything? No? So talkative. All right, so what's going to happen? Uh, I'm going to just let you guys work on that. Normally, what happened if we were live, I'd just go sit behind my monitor and start grading your homework and then tell everyone to keep working. And we would work until 4.45. And most students actually get it done before they leave class and they hand it in and then they're just good for the whole week. So if you want to just take the rest of the next 30 minutes and work on your font homework, um, you should be able to bang that out and uh, get it done before the end of class. I am not going to sit around. I mean, I'll sit around here for a few more minutes. And if you have any questions about anything, you can hit me up and ask me. I'm going to turn the recording off and then um, if no one asks me any questions and you're just comfortable with just doing work instead of doing it now, you're welcome to do that too. All right. All right. So uh, Halloween is this coming weekend. I want everyone to be safe. There is a lot of uh, insanity that happens this weekend, depending on the weather. It looks like it's going to be a cold one, so there may it may not be as crowded. But uh, remember, bring your jacket when you're standing in the door. Wondering if you should bring your jacket. Bring your jacket. All right. That's it for me. Over and out. Class is over, everyone. Um, I mean, I'll stay here, answer any questions, do any demos if anyone needs it. But if not, I'll see you Thank next you. week. Thank you. Sure. Bye-bye. Happy Halloween.